Hello everyone, my name is Madonna Wambua and today I will be kicking off my More Than 113 Development Cookbook video series and today I'll be walking you through how to install your Android Studio but before that I'm just going to talk a little bit about what inspired this video series and mainly it's because in early January of 2022 I decided to yeah, write a book, the modern Android 13 development cookbook. And the book took me a year plus month to complete. And the projects in the book are pretty just recipes. That's uh, around 70 recipes. And what I do or try to do in this recipes is just try to walk through some projects. And that's what I'll be doing in this video series. And also in the video series, I'll add just a couple of more content on Android and how to build applications. But that said, you can get my book on Amazon or Barnes & Noble or Walmart or anywhere books are sold. And the idea is to just, I might not talk, talk through all the content that's on the book. For instance, why do we use, let's say, coroutines or why do we use threading or what is concurrency or what is health? Because you cannot talk. I mean, I can memorize everything, but the book does that. So what I'll be doing is more of just walking you through the projects, using my IDE and seeing how we can build. And also, please feel free to write comments on the comment section if you get stuck or if the project is not running on your end. So I can see how we can troubleshoot together. And yeah, let's get started. So to get started, you'll definitely need to ensure that you've installed Android Studio. You can see I use JetBrain. If you see holes, it really enables me to just easily update my Android Studio. And in case anything happened to my Android Studio, I can go back to default mode. That is going back to the previous mood that I want to have. So as you can see, this is how I launched my JetBrain from here. You can see I have a JetBrain toolbox and I use it for all those apps. I mean, I also do code in uh, Python and also TypeScript, and I've also been trying to write JSS. I know that's, is that JavaScript? JSX, yes, that one. And that's just through our website. I, from time to time, I enjoy just being able to understand other stacks and just see how I can build with them. I found out, I found out that it's not hard. Because right now, for instance, I'm also building in Swift, which is iOS. So I totally enjoy all this. So if you want to use the JetBrain toolbox, you'll just come here and be able to download here. But what you need, if you're a new person who's never installed an Android Studio, you'll need to come here and you can say get the latest version. And as you can see here, you want to make sure that you get the Android Studio that's latest. And I see the latest right now is actually Hedgehog. And if we see in my toolbox, you can see here, it's act I actually have Hedgehog. I'm using Hedgehog too. Uh, spoiler, I'm also waiting for Impala because Impala is my favorite animal. I don't know why, but I, I'm hoping they release that. But that's the thing uh, you can um, install here. So I'm not going to do that because that's already installed on my end, but there's a lot of instructions on how you can install that. Now from here. Let's say Android Studio, it's already opened, so it's gonna show there that's already opened. So I don't need to open that. That again, I'm just gonna move my video over here. So as you can see that, and this is a new project, that's a sample project, but I'm going to show you how. So once you install your Android Studio, you need to start your first project. And I'm just going to show you how you're going to create that. So what you're going to do, you're going to come here, and say new project. So you've launched under the studio, it's empty, there's nothing. You can click file, new, file, file, new project. And then once you click the new project, you can come here. Right now, this is a compose activity. This is an empty view activity. This is a basic view activity. This is no activity. If you're building a library, maybe you would wanna do that. And then this is a bottom navigation view when you need to just have that date, that code already written for you, you can do that. But for us, what we need is just an empty activity. So we're going to do that, empty activity. Now, here is where you name your application. So for instance, if I was building an application like Budgeting Buddy, this is where I named Budgeting Buddy. And then that's how it's, it has com.madonna.budgetingbuddy. Now here we're going to name this application, let's say sample app. And the reason as to why I'm doing this is 
all the apps on my book, as I mentioned, are going to be similar, just we build in in a different way, maybe a different name, or sometimes we'll use the same name, just for demo purposes, for people who, who are visual learners, because I know sometimes other people don't enjoy books. Maybe it's also good to reference the book in terms of, let's say you're trying to see how things work, because I might not, as I mentioned, I might not cover why we use Hilt, what is Hilt in details, but you can find that all in the book. Now, I named my app Sample App, as you can see here. It has the package name, app. This is where I'm saving it. That's the location, users, Madonna, Siambur, and then Sample App. Now, the minimum SDK, this is just, it shows you the number of places where your device, uh, where that particular version is supported. Now, if we take API 24, as you can see here, we're able to support 96.3% of devices. That means Android phones. We have the Samsungs, we have the Motorola, we have, I don't know if the HTC still exists, but I know we had, we had the HTC, and we have many other models that I might forgot, but we have, I, I know we, have, we still have Nokia and more. This is what it just means. It will be able to run on those devices. Now, if you go, let's say API 21, you'll see it's 99.6% device uh, percent of devices. Now, let's check if we build for API that for which is the latest, mm, less than 1%. So you don't wanna do this. You wanna make sure that you build for, you pick a minimum SDK that targets many devices so that at least your app can run. And I think, excuse me, I think API 24 is much better. So we are going to go with API 24. Now, this one here is just a recommended because it auto-generates clean code for you in the get-go. And then you hit finish. When you hit finish, it's going to run on my other side, but this is what you'll have. I don't need to open the sample app that I created, but I was just showing you how to create an application or how to start a new application from scratch. Now, as you see, this is the same thing you'll have. You'll have a Kotlin plus Java package. You'll have a manifest. This is where you put all your permissions. Oh, Grader is flying on the other side. That's it's not able to let me click on this. But as you can see here, this is the application and it allows backup. It has data extraction rule. It has full backup content. And this is the app icon, which is the app icon where you launch your application. This is the icon people see. Now the label, that's the name of the app. When everybody launches your app, this is what they will see like Android community. And then it has this because now we need to support RAND icons because of new design. And then we have all these things. So the theme is just the theme of the phone itself. And then here the target again is the target. API. Now this is the first action that actually launches the application when someone clicks on it and then it opens the app. Now uh, we have colors. This is where we define the colors of the app and this is the colors of the app currently. We have the theme. I will not talk about mo this more on other videos so that's why I'm talking about them in this video. We have the theme. So here as you can see it's more more than now when we build in Android applications because we're given dark and light colors like in the get-go. Uh, back in the days, we didn't have this. So it was pretty tough building. You would have to think of ways to support your app, your app in terms of dark mode. And then as you see here, we're going to be using a Compose. Compose is the new. So my book uses Compose throughout because if you ask me, wow, I feel like Compose is the best ever to build with. It's much easier to learn. I mean, according to me, and it's easier to adapt to. I know it's pretty hard said than that done, especially if you have a legacy application, it's not easy. But I would definitely say if you're building a new application from scratch, use Compose. It's so productive. And as you can see here, this is the theme that will be run in the entire application. As you can see here, it calculates and does the dark modes for us pretty easily. Now we have the type, which is typography, definitely for accessibility and also for ensuring that the application has the right typography when we are building. And then this is our main activity. So this is when we are going to launch this, we can just change, let's say, so here, here, this is default. This is what Google gave us, like 
when you create an application you'll get this dummy code you can remove all this and here we can change to something that you want so the name here as you can see we are passing an android android so here what we'll say is hello android we can change this to actually say maybe hello android community so we're not going to do a lot here so this one will just print hello android community now for this one here it's used to preview so this one if you want to run this in your particular if you want to run this just on the side this is how you're able to see what you're building it makes it much easier for developers to just see the kind of work they're doing but this is not running it on the emulator this is just showcasing it on a preview on the side of your emulator on the side of your ide when you're building so as that builds so normally they take time a little bit when it's a fast time but after that it becomes faster and faster and faster and as we do that i will talk about this here a little bit so this here is where you build your emulator and an emulator is like an emulated device you can also use your phone to test uh, it's much easier you can just go to settings and then go all the way to develop mode and click four times to enable that and then it will set developer mode or you can use the emulators but it's not recommended because sometimes uh, emulators are not as fast as normal phones so when you're testing please test on a real device makes a big difference and then so emulator is just to help you see what you're building as i said it takes time my laptop is not that bad but it definitely does take time to build when it is fast time because this is just a new project that we created and as i do that i'm going to show you something else. so before we would put all our layouts here but if you noticed i mean for people who've not seen this i mean i don't think you'll see any difference but if we were going with their old way of doing android you would see layouts here so where you would be able to build all your screens from this side using xml so an example of xml code this is just a sample of how let's say the colors are defined this is where we put our strings this is where we put the theme as you can see there and then here we have the xml which is just a couple of uh, there's nothing here not a lot we can do whatever we want to do here see this is cloud backup cloud backup if we want to define those this is where our icons live and this is where all the images if you use using images go so this is just like a resource folder now uh grado this is just um a grado helps us build android applications as you can see here run them and um, we can set our pro guard rules just for security we can check grado properties we can check the grado wrapper most of this you're not encouraged to edit because they, they they don't need to be edited but you can also view the project in terms of the project structure and as you can see i don't think you need that you can come here you can go to the source as you can see here there's the package android test so this is where you put your ui test and here where we have the test is where you put your unit test as you can see here unit test and this is your main package again where we were main package da, 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 da. similar view but just viewing everything here as you can see this is the grado and that's your build.grado or this is your build.grado as you can see that it just has the version number of the android and the jet brain called in android and then the other grado here is the app grado this is the project this is the app so this is where we put all your dependencies that you need as you can see here this is where i'm putting my i didn't put anything here as of yet but this is where you see we're defining we're using material 3 for design we're using ui tool in preview compose graphic this particular view just to view all our project structure and as you can see here we have everything right set and as you can see here we're running a particular app on minimum sorry not minimum but medium phone api 34 and when we run the app hopefully we'll just see a display and as you can see it's now launching 
and there you go so it says hello android community and that's what application should show and that's the past application i do for my book so i'll stop the video here and definitely look forward to coding more on the next video where we'll talk about more things and just build more components in android and hopefully you will learn something from this video please you can share and subscribe and see you on the next video bye